what's up divas and what's up divas so you already know it is real talk wednesday and of course we about to dish it out talk about people or not really talk about people but talk about people's life situations and try to give them their or give them our best opinions or advice or suggestions as well as that catch up on the latest so you girls already know this hair is like super old i've been wearing this for like months now and this is actually hair from bestlacewigs.com this is their kinky straight weaving hair and i'll post the information for you girls below if you're interested in it I actually made a wig into it so there is a $10 off coupon and I'll post that for you girls below but I've been wearing this for months and I've worn it many a times on my real talk because it's so easy just easy go-to hair corn rolls on the side and especially right about now because it was 86 fucking degrees today in Arizona okay now I'm not gonna say I'm mad and I'm not going to say I miss the winter blizzards, the winter storms, the 10 feet of snow. I don't miss any of that. However, however, I do wish that winter would have lasted a little bit longer than it did this year. So it's already like, like I said, 89, 90 degrees has gotten to that. And it's only freaking February. I can only imagine what the summertime is going to be like which is going to be super hot and a bitch like me don't really care for heat so the best suggestion for people like myself who get angry when they step outside the door because it's so fucking hot is to stay indoors that's the best suggestion that i can give you guys yes so if you girls have watched my latest videos i am really kicking out a lot of get ready not even get ready with me videos i don't like to call them that because everybody else calls them that so i just call them before and after beauty on a budget especially if it's beauty on a budget if it's in it's really really inexpensive makeup but it's really before and after what i look like before and what i look like after but i've really been kicking out a lot of those so make sure you guys check those out and other than that today's drink it is in a plastic cup and here we go this is some lemon um bacardi and some orange juice so i have been already drinking it as you guys can see and yes i'm feeling a little awesome right about now a little saucy a little bit awesome but other than that, if you're wondering, where is my other earring? So my grandson is downstairs. It's our hangout day. We hang out a lot. And he likes to pull my jewelry off. So with that being said, he got me for one of my earrings. I'm like, listen, they're not real gold. You can't pawn them. So just leave them alone. But he's one. He's a little bit over one. A month and a one. A year and a, and a month. So he likes to basically pull off my jewelry so i try to stay plain jane when i'm around him he even gets to the point to where he likes to pull on my wig and we cannot have that ladies we cannot so anyway i am going to go ahead and get into this video um today's real talk Hopefully it's going to be four because I have four in mind. So we're going to get right into this. If you have a real talk situation that you would like advice on or just basically our opinions on, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, real talk. If you want to change the name of the characters in your email, meaning if it's about yourself and your name is Angela, but you don't want anyone to know, you can always change your name to Sally. However, that's an ugly, hideous name, but try to find something more appealing, okay? And just let me know in the email that you changed the names. But other than that, you can go ahead and send me an email, and let's get into this real talk. Okay, ladies, so, like I said, I'm already drinking, um... And I should have waited at least, but you know, it is what it is. And it was only one cup. So let's get into this. Hey, April, I love your channel. You need your own TV show. You're so real and transparent, and I admire that. I hope you and the other ladies, <clears throat> excuse me, I hope you and the other ladies on here can give me some needed advice. Names already changed. You can call me Gina. I'm 28 years old, and so is my boyfriend, Chris. We've been dating almost one year. Both have college degrees, but I make double what he does. My salary before taxes is a little more than 40000 
He's looking for a different job, but no luck yet, and overtime has dried up at work. After his bills, he can barely afford to take me to a movie or dinner, so I frequently end up having to pay for things for both of us. He's taken me out a few times and paid, but it's difficult because he need, he ends up short on money later. I'm not rich, and I have my own bills and student loans, so money is tight for me, too. I've been encouraging I've been encouraging and supportive while he looks for a better paying job. But April, I'm so fucking frustrated with him being broke all the time. The positives about Chris are that so far he's proven trustworthy and faithful. He has a great sense of humor. He's smart. He's a gentleman and he has no kids, so no baby mama drama. Sadly, it can be hard to find these qualities in a man these days, especially a black one. So I don't want to leave what could be something good over money. My friends say that I'm settling, but some of them are lonely as hell or put up with some other bullshit with their men. So I don't trust their advice. I was raised that a man takes care of his woman. I can take care of myself, but shit, I don't want to be the one cashing out all the time. Please help me figure out if I'm tripping or not. What can I do to deal with this? So, we have Gina, Gina, who's 28 years old, and so is her boyfriend, Chris. So, basically, Gina makes double his amount because that's what the email says. I almost make twice more than my man and my settling. And, basically, Chris is looking for a better job. So, he does take her out and he treats her. However, if he takes her out, he may be a little strapped for cash later on in the week. And she makes more than him, twice as more than him. So he's looking for a better job. And so Gina's so-called friends are telling her, telling her that she's settling. And however, they're telling her that she's settling. But their relationships with their man ain't about shit neither. Meaning they're settling for bullshit. However, Gina wants to know what should she do. She's frustrated. She don't want him to be broke all the time. But let's get to the straight point. He's a gentleman. He's trustworthy, he's kind, he's friendly, um, let's see what else it says, he's smart, he has a great sense of humor, he's faithful. So the whole situation has to do with money. And she don't want to be the one fronting all the time for the cash outs on the date. However, he does take her out, but he may be a little strapped for cash. So she wants to know what should she do, because she don't want to miss out or leave someone that's really worthy because of a money situation. What should she do? Here's the thing, Gina. Here's the first thing you need to do. You need to stop fucking listening to your dumbass friends talking about you settling. First of all, what kind of relationship are they in with their man? You already just said that they settle for other bullshit that's not even dealt with the money. So I can only imagine what the fuck they settle with in a relationship. Stop listening to your girlfriends who are lonely, miserable, and ain't got shit going the fuck on. Okay? You already set the fucking foundation for what he is meaning you said he was trustworthy faithful good sense of humor a great person basically he's just a fucking great guy and that's hard to find qualities in a black man so now here's your issue you're having issues where he don't make the same amount or more money than you do okay and you don't want to be the one cashing out all the time however you've grown up to know that your parents have instilled in you that men take care of their woman so let's back that the fuck up real quick, okay? Let's just back that the fuck up real quick. First of all, I'm going to tell you this much. It's nice to be taken care of and all that great shit, yada, 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 do this and do that for me. However, with every man that takes care of their woman, there's always some kind of payment in return. Whether you know it or not, you're giving up the pussy, okay, because that's the payment. Or you're doing shit for him constantly, serving him, servicing him, waiting on him. You're doing shit, okay? So... There's repercussions to men taking care of you. Now, here's my thing. It's great. Yes, that is an old fucking saying. Let's bring that back to the Stone Age. Men take care of their women. There are a lot of women, and I'm going to be the first to tell you that I don't need no fucking man to take care of me, okay? It's nice if you give me gifts and we go half on shit, meaning we go half on these motherfucking bills, we go half on dates, we go half on buying shit together. However, I don't need no man to take care of me 100%. And I'm not saying that I I'm a female chauvinist pig or I'm against men or anything like that. But 
my thing is this i'm a strong woman i'm not even gonna say i'm a strong black woman like someone would say i'm a strong individual i'm a strong person i'm a strong woman who can handle my own i don't really need a man to take care of me it would be nice however i don't need you to take care of me 100 percent because i have my own backbone and my own two feet to stand up on so i don't need a man to really take care of me yes it is so it was said back then and back to the leave it to beaver days back when when Joan Cleaver and Leave It to Beaver was out and The Honeymooners was out and I Love Lucy was out and all the fucking good ass black and white shows was out. Men take care of their women and they support them and they do this and do that. It's a new fucking era, okay? A new motherfucking era. And if you don't like the cursing, ladies and gentlemen, you can always exit. However, this is real talk. But like I was saying, it's a new fucking era. Women stand on your own because if you want to be so self-sufficient and so independent and feel like, oh, we are this and that on the food chain, stop relying on a fucking man to take care of you. It's a given fact. It is 50-50 in a relationship. So just because you're with him and he's a man does not mean that he has to make more money than you. It does not mean that he has to take you out on fucking dates all the time. Let me tell you something. If I was a dude, if I was a man and I had a fucking bitch and all I did was treat her all the time, all the time, take her out, spend money on her, and we went out to dinner and she didn't want to pay, how you think I would feel, okay? It's given. It's 50-50. You give, I receive. I give, you receive. It's a shared relationship. Nobody is doing more than one person because that person has got a dick between their fucking legs. And no one's doing less because they got a pussy. It does not work like that. If you care about someone, you share the responsibilities of all things. It ain't, oh, because he's a man, he got to do more than me. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you like this. I'm a strong person, and I don't ask nobody for shit. So here's my thing. If I got some bills to pay, and you ain't just automatically up front of the money, I'm not about to ask you because I have this whole situation with myself where I don't like to ask people for shit because I don't like the answer fucking no. I don't like nobody telling me no. I don't like anybody telling me I don't have it. I don't like anybody telling me nah, I'll see you later about that. Or I don't like any of that shit. So, as me being a strong woman, I can handle my own shit, okay? However, it is 50-50. So, if you guys are going out on dates, don't you think that because you care about this person, that you would want to treat him to a meal, to a movie, to a dance, to a party, to whatever, to an outfit? If this is what couples do, you know what I'm saying? Just because he got a dick don't mean he got a front for everything he's a man he's not fucking god he's a person he's a human fucking being and it's 50 50 in a relationship okay not 80 20 or 90 10 it's 50 50 and a lot of people don't feel that way like a lot of people feel like oh because i'm a female he's a man he gotta do everything who the fuck said that this is a new era okay a new era so if you was in a gay relationship who the fuck you gonna choose it's two bitches or it's two men what the fuck? Who gonna pay what? You gonna say, oh, the, the female that's more masculine is gonna pay for shit? It don't work like that in the real world. It's 50-50. There are the dates that are called Let's Go Dutch, where you pay for your own shit and I pay for my own shit. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Because I be damned if I'm paying for shit all the time. We on dates and shit. And then you don't fucking chip in because I'm a man. Nah, it works both ways. So don't feel like, oh, because he's so masculine that he needs to front all the bullshit. And tell your friends to fucking fall back and kick rocks with no shoes and socks on because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Talking about you settling. Now here you got a faithful man, a trustworthy man, a man with a good sense of humor, a hardworking man, a man that's trying to find a better job to increase his income, but you worried about what your fucking bitches got to say. So let's talk about you, Gina. Seems like you being stereotypical because you like, I don't feel like fronting the cash. Here's the thing. First, I'm going to take a drink. Here's the thing. Y'all both young. 20, what I think it was, 28 or whatever. 28 years old. Right? Yeah, y'all both young. 28 years old. I wish I was 28 years old right about now. Okay? 41 years old. So, let me tell you something. You guys get in this, y'all get stuck in this bullshit, which 
you go off of what people say and what people think and what people feel. A lot of young people are always concerned about what other people got to fucking say and what other people got to think and how other people think of you. I'm going to tell you this much. I don't really give a fuck what nobody thinks about me. Point blank, period. If I want to treat my man to dinner, which I have done many a times, okay, then that's what the fuck I want to be doing. That's what the fuck I be doing, okay? Not to mention that he has bought me uh, many electronics, a brand new fucking computer, an iMac computer for $1,800, a fucking com a ca um, a camera that I'm recording on right now for 900 and something dollars with lenses and all that shit and other shit. So why can't I treat him? Because he got a dick. I got to I gotta just sit back and fall back and let him do everything. No. Here's the thing. First of all, I'm a female that has pride. I ain't about to let you feel like you got one over on me because you pay for this and pay for that. Because you ain't about to throw no bullshit up in my face talking about, well, I took care of you and I did this and I did that. I'm not that type of person. I don't allow that bullshit. That's why I say it's 50-50. And if you can't do 50-50, then I don't really know what to tell you. But you better come through with some shit, okay? Sometimes people fall on hard times. At least he ain't no lazy motherfucker, okay? Who don't want to do shit. Who ain't even concerned about getting a better job. Who ain't even concerned about being strapped for a little cash because he took you out to a movie and a dinner. You know what I'm saying? Now, me being a man, and if I didn't have it like that, and I took you out for a movie and a dinner, and I and I knew in advance that I was gonna be strapped for cash. Bitch, your ass wouldn't been getting no, and you wouldn't been going no fucking way. Okay, like I'm a, I'm gonna say it again. If I was a motherfucker who knew in advance that once I took your ass out for a movie and dinner, that I was gonna be broke, I wouldn't have took your ass no fucking way. Okay, we would have stayed at home and we would have watched Netflix and we would have had a home cooked meal and we would have enjoyed the night. So, Gina, stop listening to your dumbass friends because I bet you this much they don't have a man who's trustworthy, kind, gentle, hard working. And faithful. I bet you a good sense of humor. I bet you they don't have that because you yourself already said that they they settle for other bullshit. So no, you're not settling for shit. However, you're 28 years old and life is a journey. It's a ladder. You have to climb each step one at a time. However, just because he got one job does not mean that job at the end of the motherfucking rainbow is going to be a pot of gold for him, okay? You have to work your way up in world corporate, okay? Your shit is not just handed to you. You're not going to get a job where say, oh, we're going to give you $63,000 this year, okay? It's not handed to you. He has to work his way up. So here's the thing. He has... All of these qualities, and the good thing about it is he ain't got no fucking kids. Let me tell you something. Before I got back with my fiance, I have dated someone. I didn't even date him. I just wanted him for the sex, like I told y'all. Because he was good looking. He was from Jersey. But he has a daughter. And it was always about her, constantly, constantly, constantly. And you know what? Baby mama drama is so unnecessary. And though I have kids, I don't really want to date anyone that has small children because I don't have time for the chaos and the bullshit with you, your child, or your baby mama drama. So, be thankful that this motherfucker does not have any children right about now. And he has all those qualities that you are looking for. However, Gina, stop being selfish. And I say this very freely because... If you're so worried about money, yeah, it may make the world go round. However, you can have all the money in the world and be fucking miserable as hell. And if you continuously listen to your friends, you ain't going to have shit but a relationship with a deadbeat who ain't worth shit and got baby mama drama. So as for your friends, why don't you just let them sit on the sideline and worry about what the fuck they be doing? And worry about what Gina wants. Because I guarantee you, his qualities, like you said, are very hard to find. And I promise you this much. 
Bitch, you ain't about to find no motherfucking nigga out here like that. And I guarantee you when he do find a good job and he's raking in the dough and he has all these qualities behind him and you leave him, you're going to wish you fucking stayed with him. So it's about sharing and caring in a relationship. It's 50-50. Sometimes we got to front. If you care enough about the motherfucker and he's a good person, you got to struggle that battle with him. Because if it were the shoe on the other foot, I guarantee you, you would want him to be there. So don't just leave him for money because a lot of relationships end in over money situations my last relationship which was a marriage it was partial issues with money I paid like 80 to 85 percent of everything and he was stealing from me it had a lot to do with that and he wasn't doing shit and a female like me you're not about to fucking stay with me or live with me and not do shit I don't put up with that bullshit I have five kids not six all right, I don't need to take care of a grown ass man. However, if I see you're working and you're trying and we're working together, then we're gonna do Dutch. We're gonna do 50 50. We're gonna work together. If you need a little something, I'm gonna hit you up. If I need a little something, you're gonna hit me up. But I'm not about to fuck with no broke ass nigga that ain't got no ambition, no motivation, and ain't even thinking about shit. You know what I'm saying? However, you got somebody that is. So stick to him and stop listening to your dumb ass friends because I guarantee you their boyfriends ain't half the motherfucker that he is. So, ladies and gents, give Gina your advice. What would you do um, in this situation? Um, how would you feel? How would you react to the situation yourselves? So, the next one. Okay, I would, hey April, I would really appreciate your advice because I am so confused. I have changed the names. I'm Maya and I'm 23. I met a 29-year-old guy named Brian on OkCupid okay and we have, been, we have been going out on dates for about a month now and we have yet to kiss. We met at least twice a week and he always treats me. We have even went on two road trips. I have even been to his house and we have watched movies together. Considering how he treats me, I am confused if he just wants to be friends, wants something more, or is just shy. When we go out, he does not look me in my eyes, nor my boobs, or other women. He just glances off. When we watch movies together, we did not even cuddle. I kissed him on the cheek when he gave me a Valentine's gift. Um, a few dates after, he only kissed me on the cheek because we almost were a part of an accident car accident we do hug at the end of the dates but they just seem lackluster i do like brian and he is a really sweet to me i'm glad that he isn't the type of dude who just wants to get into my pants but i feel there should be a little bit more affection between us what do you think is he into me should i confront him about it and if so how should i go about it maya okay hmm so Maya is 23. She's met a guy named Brian who's 29. I guess it's on a dating site called OkCupid. Okay I've never heard of this. However, they've been out for a month now and they went on dates and things like that. And they have yet to kiss. Um, she's kissed him on her his cheek. He's kissed her on the cheek. They went on two road trips. They've, she's got his Valentine's Day gifts. Um, but she doesn't know if he's into her or not. Is he shy? So, hmm. <clears throat> Maya, seems like Brian there might be a little bit on the skittish side, a little shy, a little, he might need a little push. Um, first of all, here's the thing. You better be damn happy that he ain't no fucking nigga who want to stick his dick right up in you on the first fucking day. And I'm sorry for being so blunt, but there are so many men, young men, whomever, who just want to get it popping as soon as they hit up with you. Like, it could be the first date which is smooth sailing, but the second date, they feel like, oh, we done went out on two dates. I'm about to hit it tonight. Yup, yup, I'm going to hit it tonight. And that's how a lot of them feel, which is very unfortunate. So when you come across a guy like Brian, who's not into that, who's not thrusting his tongue down your throat, who ain't trying to finger pop you, who ain't trying to get you in the sack, it's kind of like a shock to you. There are those men that are left out there in the world. We do have shy men. We do have gentlemen. Maybe Brian's issue is not that he's shy. Maybe he was raised properly, okay? You understand what I'm saying? Maybe he was raised properly to where he don't need 
to fucking try to thrust his tongue down your throat. He don't need to try to get you in the bed. He don't need to try to manipulate you to get some pussy. Okay? Maybe he's a real true gentleman. But you want to know, is he interested in you or not? Or is it a friendship? Now, here's the thing, Maya. Instead of you sitting back in the shade, sitting back in the corner and trying to figure this all the fuck out, why don't you just approach the motherfucker and let him know how your feelings are? I'm not saying come across to him as an aggressive person. Don't be too aggressive because some men don't like women who are so aggressive. Um, me, for one, I'm very, very aggressive. And sometimes it is... I've Okay, I've been told by my fiancé that I am very aggressive when it comes to sex sometimes. <laughs> okay? And the things that I might do, it just, like, I'm just really aggressive. And sometimes it might be a turn-off. Or it may not be a little turn-off, but it might just be a little turned down sometimes. So, a lot of men are not used to women that are so aggressive like that, okay? However, he might be the type, like I said, who was raised properly and wants to treat a lady like a fucking lady. But maybe you're not used to that because of prior incidents with mofos who are freaking mannerly challenged. Mannerly fucking challenged, okay? Meaning them motherfuckers ain't got no manners. Coof challenge, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Now, if he likes you as a friend and he wants to have a relationship to, with you, then maybe he is working his way up to that. Some people in life like to make sure that the relationship is going to last a whole lot longer than a lot of these short-term relationships by becoming friends and entrusting in that person and giving them their friendship be prior to fucking them in the bed, okay? So don't be confused because he ain't trying to stick it in. That's maybe because he's a gentleman. Now, here's the thing, Maya. If you have strong feelings for him, but you want to know how he feels about you in return, why don't you have a sit down with him? Y'all already went on two road trips. Road trips is some shit where your ass is in the car for quite a few hours and you got more than enough time on your hand to conversate about a whole bunch of shit. Okay, so if y'all been on two road trips, means that you can have a full-blown conversation with this motherfucker without fucking sinking into your shell and feeling like, I'm not going to say anything. Now, if he is shy, that's okay. There are a lot of shy people. I'm going to be the first to tell you I was shy at one time. Believe it or not, you guys probably don't think so, but... As a child growing up, it was very hard for me to make friends. I was very shy. Not as shy as some people are. Some people are so shy that they're just fucking timid. Now, I kind of outgrew that in high school when people tried to bully me. And at that point, I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm not about to let this shit fucking keep riding on. So I woke up the next day and fucking spazzed out on everybody. So my shy shit went away. However, if he is a little shy, that's okay because the, some people are slower than others. Some people are faster than others. However, if you feel a connection or you want to feel a connection or you want to know if there is a connection, Maya, why don't you talk to him and let him know, hey, I'm really interested in you. I like you. I've been vibing with you. I'm feeling you. I just want to know. Are we on the same page? Don't come out and say, I just want to know, do you feel the same way about me? Or shit like that. Because that's kind of like coaxing him into saying what you want him to say. I just want to know what page are we on in your eyes as, as far as a relationship? Are we going to be friends? What level? What is this all about? If you guys met each other on OkCupid, okay sounds like a website, dating site to me. So obviously he was looking for love. And obviously he's found it. However, give him a chance. It's only been a month. You act like you about to fucking get married, have kids, he should propose to you, all of that extra bullshit. Shit, be happy you ain't got no thirsty motherfucker who want to get up in your shit. I'm just saying. Have a nice conversation with him. Because all in all, 
His issues could be that he's a gentleman and he was raised by a good woman and a good father. Or just a good woman or just a good father. Either way, he could just be a gentleman and you just ain't used to that shit, Maya. So don't give up. Don't feel like he ain't interested in you. Don't sit there thinking, oh, maybe he don't like girls. Oh, maybe he don't like me. Oh, maybe he just just shy. Maybe he's just a fucking gentleman and you really ain't used to that shit. So you're saying, you're seeing things in a whole different freaking boat. Have a talk with him. Let him know what's on your mind and how you feel. Don't just come right out and say, well, because you ain't do this and because you ain't do that. Don't do that because now you're pointing fingers. And what he didn't do was not wrong. Because he didn't thrust his tongue down your throat on the first or second or third day is not a wrong thing. Maybe he's just a gentleman, okay? Bottom line, there are gentlemen left in the real world. Believe it the fuck or not, there are. A lot of females feel like because a nigga ain't trying to hump on them and tongue them down and finger pop them that it's like, oh my God, I got to fucking be messing with a gay dude or something is wrong with him. No, maybe he's just a man and maybe he's just a gentleman. Ever think about that? So give Maya your words of advice and wisdom. So here is the next one. Hello, April. I hope all is well. My name is Brianna, and this is this real talk is about myself and my ex-best friend, Shay. Shay and I met our freshman year of high school, so we have basically been friends for over 10 years. When she, when she went away for college, we remained friends, but recently things seem to have changed. I have always been her greatest support team, even to the extent of playing a major part of the details of her mother's funeral. I loved and respected her mother as though she was my own. The real issue is that through all that we have been through, when I needed her the most, she acted as though she was unavailable. She began playing games on the phone, leaving me on hold as she continued laughing and talking with the same girls she once called complaining about. So after that, I contacted her and called her out on her bullshit to see if she would own up to it. She claimed I was attacking her and she had no interest in, interest in being my friend anymore. I felt this was an invalid reason to stop a friendship of over 10 years, and I accused her of feeling this way prior to our argument. Anyway, I'm engaged now, and during my wedding planning, I've become angry that Shay isn't by my side during this life-changing experience. Do you think I should just move on? I don't know what to do. Wow. So, let's see here. Okay, so basically, oh, I know you guys are like, oh. So basically, Brianna has been friends with Shay for 10 years. And they had a fallout over some bullshit, okay? Because Brianna called Shay on her bullshit. Why you keep putting me on hold? Why you keep avoiding me? Oh, I don't want to be your friend over this. Like, really? So, to me, it does seem, Brianna, honestly, it does seem like there's more to it than she's explaining. Because if you, if we're friends for a certain amount of time, we've been friends for so long, and, okay, I'm starting to act real shady and funny to you, and you call me out on, on it, and then... I tell you, I don't want to be friends with you anymore. That means that she's guilty of some bullshit. Okay? Now, here's the thing. Friends, true friends are hard to find. And I have come to that conclusion myself. Okay? Um, within the past, <clears throat> excuse me, within the past year, I have come to that conclusion myself. That there's really, to me, honestly, I don't really, I mean... It's really great to have a good friend, um, a good confidant, a good spouse, what have you, someone that you can confide in. But friends, true friends, are really, really hard to find. Now, I know that I have said this numerous a times on a couple of my videos, but I have noticed that so-called friends have thrown shade on me on social media. However, I know this for a fact because I can read between the motherfucking lines. So, even though 10 years to some people may seem like a lifetime, it's really not. It's not really a long time. And it is a long time and it's not, especially when it comes to having a friendship with someone. However, here's my thing. If you want to shit on me and treat me like shit and think that you're better than me, 
I'm not fucking with you. And if you don't want to be my friend, because we're not in kindergarten, I'm not fucking with you. And some things are hard to walk away from, especially a true friendship. However, if you were really true indeed, my friend, then I don't think that we would be going through any of this bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, friends are very, very hard to find. And they come a dime a dozen. But if it's a true friend and you know it's a true friend and they've been there with you since day one and they do shit for you and they never let you down, then that's what you call And they've just been there for, for you since day one and you know there's no bullshit behind it, then that's a true friend. However, when you have someone who wants to break up their friendship with you over some petty bullshit, it was really never a friendship. And though in your heart you're a true friend and you want to still have this friendship with them, you really need sometimes to just le let things be. Let bygones be bygones and just let sleeping dogs lie. Now I say this because you got a wedding coming up. Um, you planning for your shit get married. Don't let no bad spirits let you down. And I'm pretty sure that you want Shay to be at your wedding, probably by your side. However, what you gonna do? Call her up and tell her, listen, I'm getting married. I need you to be by my side. You my best friend. Nah, fuck that. Because if she ain't been by your side for all these months, then why the fuck would you invite her to your wedding and want her to be by your side? Sometimes it is a little hard to let go and move on, whether it be from friendship, a relationship, parents, what have you, a job. Sometimes in life, we just got to let the fuck go. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to be the first to tell you, I've had a friend who I love dearly, and I still do love that person. However, I've noticed changes, and I noticed shade. So the best thing for me to do is back the fuck off and not fuck with them like that. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm the type of person, I'm very confrontational. If you say some shit about me, I will confront you, and I will fucking battle with you. But this type of relationship that we had, I'm not even going to bother, because as much as I care about you, I know the type of person I can be. I could be really grimy and really potty mouth and filthy grimy at the mouth. So in my best interest, I think that I should just leave it alone and move on. Now, when I get married again to my fiance, am I going to invite that best friend to come to my wedding? Hell fucking no. Because me and her, as I thought, we were best friends. But we really, really not anymore. You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is. It's hard to move on in life, especially when you have strong feelings for someone and you care about them, whether they be your boyfriend, your family member, or your best friend. It's hard, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do to relieve yourself and have peace within yourself. So like I was saying, would I invite her to my wedding? No. Because in the back of your mind, you're going to just wonder, oh, is she only here because she wants to be a part of this? Or is she here because she really cares about me? Don't freaking rack your brain on petty bullshit. If she didn't want to be your friend over some nonsense, then she was never really a true friend. And just like this person who is throwing shade on me, or who they haven't thrown shade on me in a couple of months, but I know you've thrown shade on me. You've come to, this, to the West Coast. You haven't said anything until after. It's just like a big thing. You know what I'm saying? And quite frankly, I'm tired of it. I don't, I'm 41 years old. I don't really have time for friends, fair weather friends. If you don't want to be my friend, then fuck you. I don't really give a shit, okay? I have kids to tend to. And I'm in a relationship. Though men come and go, a best friend is a best friend forever. However, if you want to act grimy and be on some bullshit, then I'm just going to leave you alone. So, in my opinion to you, I would honestly feel like this. Get your shit together. Do your wedding and be happy. And just... Pray for her and wish her nothing but the best. Send her. I know you want her to be by your side, but right now is not the time because you guys have not connected really like this. But what I would suggest you do is send her an, a wedding invitation so that she can come and see you get married. And if she comes, then that lets you know something. And if she doesn't, that lets you know something as well. But don't expect her to be part of the wedding party. 
know what I'm saying? Because she hasn't really been a part of your life. And me personally, I don't feel like she deserves that honor. So send her a wedding invitation and let her know, hey, I still I would love for you to come and see me get married because this is a life-changing situation. And if she does not return the um, RSVP, continue on. Because there is so much more to life than harboring and being miserable over a friendship that may not have really been a friendship. And I say this strongly because, you know what, I don't really have too many friends. But the friends that I did have or the friend that I did have, when they started shitting on me on social media, I was done. I still speak to them, but very seldom. You know what I'm saying? Because I can cut my ties real loose and continue on my day and have other shit to do. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how it be sometimes. So, on that note, let all these lovely ladies know how you feel about their situations, their life situations. Leave your opinion, statements, such and such down below. And on that note, stay diva and divalicious. And I'll see you girls on my next video.